Okay, uh, hello. <clears throat> today is the 24th of uh, May uh, 2023, and today is the birthday of uh, Mar Marcel Yanko or Marcel Yanku, uh, an important uh, presence in art and architecture. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, look at uh, him first. A picture of uh, Marcel Yanku, uh, and. Um, he doesn't look here like a rebellious uh, man, but uh, sometimes uh, appearances can be misleading. Uh, let's read a little bit about Marcel Yanko. <clears throat> Marcel Yanko, Marcel Yanku, common rendition of the Romanian name <clears throat> Marcel Herman Yanku, uh, last name also Yanko or Yanko Kujay or Yanku, Janku, Yanku. 24th of May, 1895. So indeed, he was born on the 24th of May in 1895. He was um, thus eight years uh, younger than Le Corbusier and died in 1984. Was a Romanian and Israeli visual artist, architect and art theorist. He was the co-inventor of Dadaism and the leading exponent of constructivism in Eastern Europe. In the 1910s, he co-edited with Ion Vinia and Tristan Zara the Romanian art magazine Simbolul. Yanko was a practitioner of Art Nouveau, Futurism and Expressionism before contributing his painting and stage design to Zara's literary uh, Dadaism. He parted with Data in 1919 when he and painter Hans Arp founded the constructivist circle Das Neue Leben. So uh, he was in 1919, uh, uh, 24 years old. But he co-founded the Dadaist uh, movement uh, when he was 22 years old. So um, Okay, reunited with Vinya, he, co he founded Contemporanul, the influential tri tribune of the Romanian avant-garde, advocating a mix of constructivism, futurism, and cubism. At Contemporanul, Yanko expounded a revolutionary vision of urban planning. He designed some of the most innovative landmarks of downtown Bucharest. He worked in many art forms, including illustration, sculpture, and oil painting. Besides, as, as I read, having uh, theoretical uh, interests and concerns, Yanko was one, one of the leading Romanian Jewish intellectuals of his generation. Perhaps I should pronounce his name as it is uh, written and pronounced in Romanian, Yanko. Uh, tar I took this um, uh, this text from Wikipedia in English, targeted by anti-Semitic persecution before and during World War II. He emigrated to the British Mandate of Palestine in 1941. He won the Gov Prize and Israel Prize and was a founder of Ein, Ein Holt, a utopian and an utopian art colony. Marcel Yanku was the brother of uh, George and Julius, I guess, Jules Yanku, who were his artistic partners during and after the Dada episode. His brother-in-law and fellow constructivist promoter was the writer Jacques G. Costin, known as a survivor of 1940s antisemitism. In 1980, Yanku revisited his childhood years writing, born I was in beautiful Romania, into a family of well-to-do people. I had the fortune of being educated in a climate of freedom and spiritual enlightenment. My mother possessing a genuine musical talent and my father a stern man and industrious merchant had created the conditions favorable for developing all of my aptitudes. I was a sensi of a sensitive and emotional nature, a withdrawn child who was predisposed to dreaming and meditating. I grew up dominated by a strong sense of humanity and social justice. The existence of disadvantaged, weak people 
of impoverished workers, of beggars, hurt me. And when compared to our family's decent condition, uh, awoke in me a feeling of guilt. So he was indeed, uh, uh, you know, a, a sensitive man. Not, not many, not many people are like this, unfortunately. But let's hope more, uh, more like him will will come into into being. Here he was in a picture um, in uh, in in Israel. Uh, he lived a long life and uh, eventful life, and um, you know I, I think not just his art but also his biography is an example that if you are true to yourself, you can uh, you know you can uh, uh, move over even some of the most difficult uh, moments in life. It's very important to be true to yourself. Some paintings by this um, celebrated artist and architect. Euphoria Dada, 1917. So he was 22 years old. Maybe we need some euphoria too. Dada or Nunu or who knows what. It's up to us, actually. Um, trophy. A trophy similar to the previous one, if not identical, maybe some some wrong name naming, untitled, a mask, portrait of Tsara. Here it is. He was, uh, um, uh, he did some remarkable masks when he worked for the Dada movement uh, in, in, in Zurich. Marina, he loved, uh, you know, scenes uh, with the sea, as, as you can see with boats. Port, again, the meeting between the land and the sea and the, and the ships. Arab Cafe, as I mentioned already, he uh, admired, uh, admired uh, things having to do with the Arab world. An Arab Cafe uh, was a, a scene of interest to him. Arab Cafe in Ramallah. Marcelianku. Four figures about to be executed. Now, this is not a happy uh, title because the anti Semitic um, actions uh, in Romania as well were very, very tragic. And uh, here we see the reaction of a graphic artist and the painter and the sensitive man to. The atrocities that uh, the blindness of man often provoke. Uh, mother and children. So you can see he was very dedicated to, to uh, plastic art, to painting, to... to, to uh, I didn't see sculptures by him, but I imagine he did some sculptures too. There are some influences here, like, for example, here from Picasso. It is called Cafe Concert. Girl por portrait, a portrait uh, of a girl. Marcel Yanku. A lake, again, another marina scene. A lake. Jews forced to wash windows from 1941. Now, you know, to wash windows uh, threatened by the, the gun is not the the funniest thing in the world at all. It's actually very sad and, 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 and tragic. Three women in Malta. Yes, he was influenced by, uh, by Picasso. Two Nazi soldiers abusing a Jew and tearing out his beard. So you see the artist is a, is, a, is a voice of conscience. The artist, just like Picasso, because I mentioned who, who protested war with his famous uh, large-scale painting, Guernica. Here we see also the artist who is militant, who wants truth, who wants sensitivity, and who wants peace. And he protests against the abuses, often tragic, of those in power. Now, architecture by Marcelianku, and we are going to go through many of his buildings. 
uh, they, I found there is a map of Bucharest with the, where you see the, the circles where, you know, some of his buildings are located. Unfortunately, his buildings are not in the best shape because uh, society, the city, the city hall and so on doesn't really care about, um, you know, important buildings, testimonies of an important architect. Uh, it's sad. In other countries, this doesn't happen. But in our in our country, yes, uh, there isn't much sensitivity even towards uh, important uh, important buildings. If we are to talk about buildings, uh, Henri Daniel Villa from 1927, so he was 32 years old when he built it. Now you wonder, did he intend? Was it just uh, Dadaist uh, maliciousness? Uh, uh, you know, uh, the fact that this, uh, you know, balcony to be didn't have a, a handrail, a parapet. You open the window and you risk your life. Here I am, you know, <laughs> masquerading myself into a functionalist. But it is funny that uh, a little slab of, of concrete, uh, you know, uh, it's not above, above a door, or maybe maybe the project was changed. Maybe it was to protect the entrance into the building, but then they changed uh, the the you know the, the plan of the of the house. It's possible. I don't know. But you see, in his architecture, he's not uh, aligning everything. Like uh, you know, even this uh, little uh, canopy. Is not quite aligned with this one. They, they almost have the same length, but this one is a little bit off. So there are, you know, asymmetries that, uh, you know, someone more conventional would protest against. And look at this little window here, you know, what is it doing there? It's so small and so, uh, there are things here that uh, probably uh, most schools of architecture would uh, condemn. But uh, Marcel Yanku didn't care about that. In a certain way, maybe in a paradoxical way, I, I kind of like these unkept houses, you know, uh, you know, showing the passage of time, the lack of care of people. I know what I'm saying is probably uh, abominable, but uh, you know, maybe G.M. Cantacuzino, G.M. Cantacuzino was right when he was contemplating the columns of Persepolis, just scattered remnants of columns, and he said, for the spirit are enough. Look at the plans of the building, of this building. Again, certain schools of architecture would protest. Why would you have a, a room which is which doesn't have parallel walls like here or like here? But why not? Why not? As if, as if life has only parallel walls, right? It's not like this. He sometimes uses round windows like here, uh, you know, which are a little bit whimsical. Herman Yanku building, this is, uh, this is him actually, He's, he, he was called, uh, you know, his middle name was Herman. Uh, now, I don't know if it was built for himself or, uh, you know, he just named it in this way, I don't know. The Herman Yanku building from 1926, when he was uh, 31 years old. Yeah, this was for him because um, I, I, I remember reading that at the top uh, he he would he had an atelier or some kind of a studio. The building is in total disarray, as you can see. I mean, it's you know, welcome to Romania, welcome to you know, uh, lack of care. But from an unconventional, romantic, and self-destructive point of view, it has a richness. Even like this, you know, on its way towards becoming a ruin. But as Marco Casagrande said, you know, the ruin is what uh, returning to nature means. Uh, I don't know. 
but too many things here point towards returning to nature. I mean, look at those, uh, you know, tubes, uh, uh, you know, on, on the wall or, uh, you know, improv improv improvised things. And the building is obviously totally disconsidered by the municipality of Bucharest. But on the other hand, I don't know. I mean, no, I shouldn't say so. But it's not sacrosanct. It's not a monument. It's, it's a building by an important architect and an important cultural figure on which some people hang their clothes there to dry and on which some people, you know, have no problem to, you know, uh, add, uh, you know, all kinds of installation devices that... Uh, invade the building, uh, distort it, um, and so on. Another villa, 1927, Prima Casa Modernista din București, the first modern building in Bucharest, the way he described it, built between 1927 and 1929, is this villa for Jean Fuchs from uh, the street Negustori, the Merchants 27. And he also continued, he said, Vecinii nu se dumiresc de ce? În locul vechilor geamuri strămoșești, casa nouă are o fereastră care merge de la un capăt la altul al zidului ca o vitrină de morgă. Ochiul de pod de obicei pe acoperiș și aici în triplu exemplar ca niște cabine clasa 1 de vapor transatlantic, iar garajul pare sucursala crematoriului central. Uh, I, I have to translate now, now in English because I'm recording the presentation and most people who visit uh, the YouTube channel do not know Romanian. So the neighbors do not understand why in the, in, in the place of the old kinds of um, windows, the new house has a window which is continuous from one uh, end, um, one side of the, of the world to the other, like... Uh, <laughs> Um, the storefront window of a, of a morgue, of a funeral home. The, the, the window of the, of the attic, um, is, uh, which is um, generally on the, on, on the attic, is here in, uh, in a triple, uh, uh, you know, there are three of them, like uh, uh, three cabins of a first class of a the transatlantic ship, and the garage, appears to be, to be the, um, the, how to call it, the, the branch of a um, central crematorium. I, I, I don't know why twice is this um, reference to the, to the crematorium. I personally don't see the building being so, um, you know, morbid. In fact, uh, you know, in its whiteness is rather, you know, uh, turning its back on what we call death. So this was supposed to be the first modernist house in Bucharest, you know, using the quotation from Marcel Iancu himself, 1926-1927. Let's recall just as a guiding mark that Le Corbusier built his Villa Savoie in 1928. So this was uh, almost uh, around the same time. Marcel Iancu, so 1927, Le Corbusier built Villa Savoie in 1928. This one is not so radical as Villa Savoie, but uh, this might not be actually a, a negative attribute, that it is not so radical. Sorry, the pictures are not always great, the ones that I have in this presentation, but I show, I show most of his um, uh, buildings. Uh, another one, Villa Maria Lambru, 1928. This one is in better shape. I'm sure he didn't design the, you know, the, the entrance gate. Uh, surprisingly, a good number of his buildings are still alive. Another villa, the Kiselev Boulevard from 1930, 
this one is uh, doing well and uh, you know uh, i mean who knows who lives here now an opulent villa still But when I look at it, and uh, you know, it's a kind of ironical that the, the, the founder, one of the founders of the Dadaist movement designed something like this, and then this is the furnishing, uh, in, you know, which is very bourgeois and comfortable and cozy. But the author, not with many years earlier, co-founded uh, Dada, the Dada movement. It's very possible that he did, he was not responsible for the choice of the furnishings. These are probably later choices of whoever owns the building or lives there. But here we see the art, you know, the, the stained glass windows, uh, um, you know, uh, surprising us with a touch of modernity. The three, uh, you know, uh, round uh, windows that... Uh, that little text, that short text also commented upon. Those two, those two chairs so distant from each other make, make one think of um, Vladimir Putin, you know, receiving a visitor and being afraid to be too close to him. It's very possible that um, that's not what uh, Marcel Yanku had in his mind, you know, to have those two chairs, uh, you know, with, uh, I don't know, four meters or so, if not more, between them. Uh, and who knows? It, it looks like it's an embassy here in this um, in this picture. Uh, that flag, uh, I don't know to which nation it belongs. And this is how the building looked like, uh, you know, uh, a longer time uh, before uh, our time. And his architecture is not really radical, and you know, in in art, he was radical to be a co-founder of the Dada movement, but. His architecture is not, um, you know, it's not oriented towards uh, acrobacies uh, without some, some, you know, uh, respect for gravity, for even for context. Yes, there are small variations, you know, with small, uh, but I, I, I think, I think exactly because of it, his architecture is rather complex, and um, uh, even it's, uh, you know. Uh, uh, partial uh, provincialism is uh, it gives a flavor, a certain flavor to this modernist. He was a modernist, but but I don't see him in these buildings as being, you know, openly revolutionary. Clara Yanku Villa, that's for his sister, 1931. Not bad. But for us today, it doesn't look extravagant or uh, you know, anything, but for that time, 1931. He valued a lot um, uh, architects who were also artists. And he even wrote that uh, this was often the case in the past, that great artists were sometimes great architects and vice versa. And I would say that, yes, perhaps uh, a return to art would do us some good. To an extent, maybe an excess in that sense is also not good. Another villa from 1931. You obviously love those round uh, windows. Uh, we see here four of them. In the previous building, we saw three. Of course, the air conditioning machineries uh, add to the picturesque uh, um, air of uh, some of the facades. 
not necessarily in the best uh, sense. Another villa, 1931. I th I have the feeling that he was rather relaxed when he designed these these villas. He he was not. Uh, I don't think he was uh, searching for perfection or for uh, you know uh, the ultimate word in, in 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 the field of architecture. And maybe exactly this relaxation. Is a quality in, in his works. What I'm trying to say is that I don't think he wanted to, you know, to, 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 to create that ultimate masterpiece which would make everybody say, wow. No, he made villas as he felt, as he thought, but with a with a kind of um, almost distancing. I, I don't think he was a fanatic architect. And that's a that's a good thing. Uh, this was, I think, built for a, for a dentist. A little hard to see because I mean, you know, that garage or whatever. I don't know if it was his work or not. But no, please notice this window here, which is, uh, you know, we had some artistic uh, concern, so to speak. Um, it is designed in a certain way. Another one, 1935. You can tell he was not very inhibited by the art of architecture that even the way he played with those stairs that you know it's um, um, I look at these three stairs here you know it, in such close proximity and here uh, I don't know this um, you know these uh, uh, scattered stairs in the plan of the of the building uh, are, are rather interesting. But when I look at his building, with all due respect to Marcellianco and to the avant-garde, and I love the avant-garde, I wonder, is it really a progress compared to this building, which is not a, you know, avant-gardist and was maybe not even designed? I mean, I don't know who designed it. But if we compare these two buildings, is this building inferior to this one? I mean, this one, look, also has windows with a certain elaboration, a certain ornamentation. There are these bow windows. Uh, this one, with all due respect, looks a little simpler, not necessarily in the best sense compared to this one. Yes, there are some interesting things here, like this, um, you know, curved uh, alcove or whatever it is. Uh, but above the garage, well, this is a place for for uh, Mussolini or something that uh, talking to the people, il duce, il duce, I don't know. But the windows, if we compare these windows with these windows, particularly these, but also these, are these better? What I'm trying to say is, didn't we simplify a little bit too much architecture in the name of modernity? Isn't here maybe something that has value and we forgot about this value? Now, maybe it's a nostalgic, the nostalgic me uh, who says this, but uh, I think there are sometimes virtues in the, in the past that we forget about. Um, another building from 1935, this one uh, rather large. It might be that with some problems, uh, you know, for a possible, uh, well, let's hope um, not happening uh, earthquake. Yeah, 
He built a lot, but he built a lot because uh, most of his buildings are for his family and uh, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, friends of his family and, and so on. Uh, what a chance, no? Hello, Marcel Yangu, with your round, uh, round windows. And now here is a, a base relief. Uh, we invited an artist, um, a lady artist, to, to, to create this artwork. And again, you know, this is a, a creative act in itself, even if he didn't do it himself, this base relief. But he invited another artist to, to do it. So this is this is what happens when you have a sensitive architect who practices art himself. He also values the art of others and tries to connect architecture with the plastic art. And that's a good thing. Now the interior of uh, you know of one apartment. This intrigues me, uh, and that's why I even uh, use this picture in the in the in the message invitational message that I sent out. It's it's very well designed and intriguing. You know, you can follow the continuity of the line and the curvatures. It's unusual, really. It's 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 a, an architectural event. Just this double opening towards two different spaces. Very interesting. And these are very useful, you know, these, uh, these uh, things that, you know, some I think useless or like here, but you can, th these small places, you know, you can place here vase with flowers, although uh, risking to hit it uh, easily and, you know, have it broken. Here again, again a small uh, place where you can place a few things. In other words, there are certain uh, elements, architectonic elements, which are uh, uh, at the first sight uh, with a dubious uh, function, but they become meaningful and very usable uh, because of life. How else to put it? And look at this glasswork here, sensitive and, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, an abstract, abstracted uh, stained glass window, another building, uh, large, uh, large block of flats. A look at this corner where he's not, uh, you know, trying to remain, uh, you know, uh, the prisoner of rectangularity. So he, you know, he had the freedom of someone who was cooled in a in a climate of. Uh, on conformism and uh, I think it worked. A large building and not a bad one at all. Marcel Yanku. Let's look again at the plan. So the view is some, some, somehow from the lower right corner, uh, looking uh, uh, towards this this uh, this corner. Uh, I guess here is the tallest part of the building. The apartments. I wonder if he designed this one as well. Maybe not. I don't know, but you see, it's a different architecture here. The windows are not don't have this kind of continuous. This one, in a way, is more modern. I mean, yes and no, but this one is more dogmatic in 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 terms of modernity than this one because here he employs windows that are individualized and not necessarily continuous, like here. I think this building. Um, 
just to say yes. It was uh, abandoned and vandalized. I think uh, I read that uh, it was uh, supposed to be restored. That's how it looked, uh, I don't know, uh, 70 years ago, 80 years ago. I don't know if it was before the Second World War or immediately after. It looked fine, but 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 look how it looks today. I mean, when I prepared the, the presentation. Now, I don't know, did this building uh, arrive in this uh, well-known uh, North American magazine, Life, or is just uh, someone wrote their life? I don't know. But the same building, look at it. The building by Marcellianco and a former glorious building by Marcellianco. From 1935, the Charles de Gaulle uh, Square, number two. I like to think that it still exists, and I like to think that it was taken care of. So as architects, we think we build forever, but this is not the case, not even in the case of the great Egyptian pyramids. They are getting eroded themselves slowly. This is the building by uh, Marcel Yanku. Another villa, 1936. I like this, you know, the, in the Romanian language. David Hainovich and Sigmund, uh, Sigmund Vatashescu building in 1937. Vatashescu, nice. You see the architect, architect uh, Marcel Iancu. And there's also, uh, what is that, the name of the engineer, or what is it? I guess. They should be mentioned both, yes. The Vatashescu building. And this is the plan. Here again and again, uh, we see, you know, the former Dadais founder uh, being uh, uninhibited by uh, you know, angles, so to speak. Look at this delicious window here. Villa Hermina Hasner, 1937. As you can see, there, there is a blog uh, where you can also read about all these buildings. And that's where I took the most of the pictures from.
not bad. Usually when we design, we don't think about the rugs and we don't think about textiles. We only think about the concrete slabs or whatever, you know, parquet or, you know, but the rugs have their own importance. And uh, here in this picture, I think it's obvious. Sometimes, uh, like in the folk culture, the rugs were also present on the walls. So the presence of the textiles is important, is to be considered. And let's not forget that Le Corbusier himself did tapestries. There are very creative, modern tapestries done by Le Corbusier. No, he didn't weave them, but he made the design for those tape tapestries. Soli Gold Building, 1934. Again, the presence of art at the entrance. Now, you wouldn't do this kind of base relief or artwork at the entrance into a parking lot, but at the entrance into a building, an apartment building, it might help. So you enter with the dignity of someone who doesn't throw a shadow on this earth without no, with no reason at all. Uh, today, because of the multitude of cars, often we enter the house or the building from the parking. Um, of course, we don't even think of inviting an artist to embellish, you know, to, to bring sensitivity to the entrance into the building. It doesn't even cross our mind. And look at this beautiful staircase. It, it truly is. It's an architectural event in itself. A window, which could have been without glory, but it is not like that because of the, the artist, of the design. Marcel Iuliu Iancu, architect. Well, he used to be Marcel Hermann Iancu. Or this was uh, his, maybe this was by his brother. But I didn't know his brother was also an architect. But one thing is for sure, or, or was his middle name also Iuliu? I, I remember it was Hermann. I have to double check. But uh, the building is his. We see his signature around the windows, three in this case. And uh, almost neurotical plan. Uh, it's clear Marcel Iancu was not inhibited by uh, complex um, uh, sites. You know, he managed uh, various angles. Uh, so he, he was not dogmatic. Look at this window here again, the little window. I called it previously a delicious window. I don't know if this is equally delicious, but it's rather unusual. Why, why did he do the room like this, you know? Most architects would have just continued this wall here. But this corner here creates a, an event within this room. And it's important, I think. Or look at these windows here. Unexpected. Now you wouldn't think when you see this plan to arrive at the second floor to discover such windows. But why not? Or this here. 
So these rooms you see are interesting. They all have a, you know, a, a corner, a side to them that where something else happens. We see here, we see here, and uh, we see here. Maybe it was a peculiarity of uh, Marcel Yanku to create uh, rooms that had a, a something uh, in on one side or in the corner, a little accident, so to speak. It's an interesting idea, actually. I don't know, was this Milica Patrashku? Maybe. I should have known the name of the of the of the sculptress. I know it was a lady artist whom she, he valued very much, and that's the reason he invited her several times to adorn his buildings, although he would have been able himself to bring some art into the building. Frida Cohen building 1935. At the bottom, cars, cars, and cars again. Too many cars. And too many antennas on the, on the facade of the building. Jacques Costin building. Now, I don't know. I guess this one in the middle, but they all kind of look made, made by the same architect. Jacques Costin. Interesting name. The first, the, the first name French, the last name Romanian. Or is the other way around? The family name Jacques and Costin. No, probably Costin was the family name. And Jacques, the first name. Uh, the name is like the buildings in a way. No, this is the Jacques Costin building, but there are actually three buildings. And look what's going on here. I think a poet would appreciate them, miserable as they are, but, but this doorway is designed, was designed by clearly by, not this one perhaps, a service entrance, but this one, most surely designed by Marcel Iancu. And it's not bad. I am not sure about these uh, written uh, pages there, but otherwise it's not bad. But then we can also uh, look at the ornaments of the graffiti, you know, disordered as they are, they, they create a, a unique uh, fragment of a facade. Villa Paul Iluță, letter C is a specifically Romanian letter and it's rather delicious. This is the third time I use the word delicious. But no, the, the letter C is a, is, a, is a very interesting and uh, I would say the annoying and pleasing letter, C. Casa Paul di Chapier. My God, these names are very cosmopolitan and uh, we, this one we already saw, but this one is different from, I think I have something wrong here. Although I did notice this, uh, this gate uh, and it was designed by him and we see here no three circles, but three spirals. That's uh, Marcel Iancu. Uh, yes, you, you see, he, I think it's here now. The, the gate, yes. And this is the website that I took, um, I took some images from on the footsteps of Marcel Iancu through the Jewish, um, uh, you know, Cartier uh, in Bucharest. And another one, La Nivellul Ocului at the level of the eye. Um, Oh, 
Oh, now we go to Marcellianco in Israel. So he left in, I think, in 1941 because of uh, the, uh, you know, developing anti-Semitism, which became more and more uh, obvious and cruel. So he went to, to Israel and uh, he founded this art, artist colony, Ein Hod, in a, um, in, uh, in, in a location which had uh, you know, buildings, uh, Arab, Arab buildings. Uh, here he is, I don't know at what age, um, you know, the painter with an immaculate shirt. You wonder how he kept it so clean. Uh, and some paintings by him uh, that, that he did in Israel. And, and you see here the, probably his beloved uh, Arab village He also, in the last year, well, one year before he died, um, uh, he built the uh, Yanko or Yanku Dada Museum. He was probably nostalgic towards Dadaism, and maybe he will regret it that he left Dadaism. Um, I say so because, you know, there was obviously a radical side to him, and uh, that radical side expressed itself best through the Dada movement. Later on, uh, you know, constructivism was not so radical and then uh, the architecture he cultivated um, was not really radical and, and that could actually be a positive attribute. But this is the Dada Yanku Museum or the Yanku Dada Museum in, uh, in, uh, in Israel. Different trees, different climate, and artworks by him. Meaning paintings. Was he happy that he didn't build actually uh, in, uh, in Israel? Uh, I don't know. But painting was uh, a way of uh, continuing his uh, aspirations towards, uh, towards beauty, towards truth, towards uh, color, towards uh, sensitivity. So cre he created these paintings after he left Romania and went to Israel to live. He even painted the Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, and I hope I have here a picture of that. I wonder what he felt when he painted those uh, uh, characters. Maybe there was a Don Quixote in himself too, maybe. This one is also interesting, you know. I, I think there was a darker side in Marcellianco, but not, uh, not as, you know, uh, an excessive one. But maybe, you know, maybe this painting does, does say something a little bit about it. And here is uh, Don Quixote on his uh, maddened horse. <laughs> You wonder who was more mad, the horse or the knight, following uh, his uh, irresistible attraction towards uh, you know, some kind of a pata morgana. Here they are again, Sancho Panza, you know, on the le on the left and bottom, and then the knight uh, above. Interesting work. An interesting theme, you wonder why Marcellianco was interested in them rather late in life. And these are some images from the museum. You see, it's written from uh, right to left. He died in 1984, he was born in 1895. Marcellianco. And again, Don Quixote. 
fighting with the windmills. There is some drama here too, in chromatically as well, the red and the green. And that's it. So let's wish him happy birthday. And thank you for your presence here today. <laughs>